Hi everyone, uh, Jarlath O'Brien here. I've been set the CPD jukebox question. Um, uh, as a teacher in a mainstream school, what can I learn from colleagues in special schools? This is a really good question, um, and I'm going to try and cover three main areas. Firstly, we'll talk about progress and what it means to do well in school. Secondly, we'll cover behaviour, um, and lastly, working with support staff. Um, so firstly, uh, progress and what it means to actually do well in school. Um, I have a concern that not just as a profession, um, but actually as a society, we regard success for a child in school and what it means to do well and make good progress um, can be limited to academic attainment. Uh, and I worry um, that there's a, a cohort of children and there'll be a significant number of children with special educational needs included within this who are deemed to have failed or been unsuccessful at school um, because they may not attain as highly as some others. Um, now, if this is our sole or main indicator of success for a child, um, then this, I think, hampers um, the, the ability of some children to feel like they've done well or be successful in school despite their skills and abilities. Uh, and what's worse, I think sometimes academic attainment can be used as a, a poor proxy for effort uh, and so a child who isn't attaining highly academically can be viewed as someone who just simply hasn't worked hard enough. And that's unfair on the vast majority of children who really put an awful lot of effort into their work. So special schools may appear different because um, they'll use a broad range of evidence uh, and indicators to gauge how well children do with them. Uh, and it will include academic attainment. That's not unimportant. But they'll also include um, social, emotional development and independence. I often say to my colleagues that actually uh, uh, the main indicator of success for us as a school uh, is what our children are doing when they're 25. And of course, they're long past being children by then. But for us, a hat full of uh, exam qualifications is no good um, if they don't then retain the skills, knowledge and confidence um, to be independent, live and work independently um, as adults. Uh, so I'd urge you to consider you know, what it uh, what it means to be successful for a child. Um, and how they're currently successful and what it will take um, from the school um, to support them to be successful in areas that they're currently struggling in. Second key area for me is behaviour. Um, special school colleagues are intimately aware um, of a strong link in the national statistics between um, behaviour and special educational needs. Children with SEN are grossly overrepresented in um, the national statistics for both fixed term and permanent exclusion. But there's an extremely strong um, bi-directional link between behaviour difficulties and speech and language communication needs, for example, um, i.e. Um, some children with behavioural difficulties go on to develop speech and language communication difficulties, um, and the opposite is also true. So children with existing speech and communication difficulties develop behavioural difficulties later on, and you can understand why. Um, so special school colleagues get this, uh, and they tend to approach behavioural difficulties as an indicator of unmet needs. This is not to pathologise um, behaviour or to absolve children of their responsibilities to behave well, um, but it does acknowledge um, that we all have it within us to behave poorly if our needs aren't well met. Uh, and in order to meet a child's needs well, we have to first understand them. Uh, and so for me, I would uh, encourage mainstream colleagues to uh, learn how to best support literacy difficulties, especially at secondary level, um, and also speech and language communication needs. The older children get, the more likely those things are to be masked um, by behavioural difficulties and be regarded as such, um, and children are less likely to have their needs met. Uh, and the last point for me is working with support staff. Uh, in special schools, it's common for the majority of staff, especially class-based staff, to be support staff. Uh, and working well uh, in a special school is vital um, uh, because you've got a number of adults working together with a group of children at any one time. Uh, so there are three things I think that mainstream colleagues could, could focus on. One is communication, so ensuring support staff know what you're trying to achieve in that lesson and over a sequence of lessons, not just limited to that hour. Um, support staff are expert mind readers, so if you don't tell them, they are going to guess, and sometimes they might get that wrong. Uh, and secondly, with assessment. Um, so support staff have an awful lot of useful information um, that uh, how students are progressing. And it's really important that you have a system that helps them to get that information um, to you on at least a daily basis. If you leave that until uh, the end of every term, then human nature being what it is, people are going to forget an awful lot um, about what's going on. Um, thanks for listening. Good luck.